I would say that uh, for me, uh, as a uh, as a newly uh, elected uh, uh, fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science, uh, this is indeed an opportunity once again to express uh, my respect for the immense contribution that uh, uh, both the Academy, but equally the World Consortium of Universities uh, uh, has done uh, for the thinking about the future of education. We all know that education is the foundation of human uh, development. Um, and I would say nowadays also of human security, a topic that is very high uh, on the agenda. We know it is vital for our health. It is vital for gender equality, for jobs, uh, the protection of environment, uh, fighting climate change uh, uh, and living together in diversity. In other words, education is where our future lies. Hence the importance of this conference. But I would say not any education. And Remus rightfully pointed out to the evolution of the thinking uh, about education, and it is in the concept paper. Education means learning that is transformative, equitable, that embraces innovation and diversity, and that encourages creativity and the possibility for young people and for all the society to make choices. Education that supports students and other learners in different areas to develop necessary knowledge, skills, mindset, as Don Federico just mentioned, to contribute to solving complex sustainable development challenges the world faces today. Of course, I'm uh, with this very short uh, uh, speech of my, uh, I do not pretend to exhaust uh, all the aspects, but I would just like to make three points. The first is that um, we have to reconfirm our commitment to the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030, where I believe education is at its heart. The pandemic uh, and its consequences has served as a wake up call for all of humanity to put education and health, I would say human security and well-being to the forefront of public policies. And if today we speak about uh, building back, not just building back, but building back better, one sure path is investing in people, investing in economies and societies that are clean, green, healthy, safe, and more resilient. And this is where the importance of goal number four of the sustainable development agenda, promoting inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all comes with its critical importance for the future. We know that all stages of education are important and uh, Remus also mentioned the holistic view of education. And I think for the first time ever, this holistic view was very much uh, incorporated uh, into the goal number four, where also for the first time, it embraced the role of universities and uh, the role of universities in all the areas of education, of science, of research, uh, of innovation uh, is nowadays um, immense. Universities indeed have a growing responsibility to translate this challenge of sustainable development um, to local circumstances through research, through learning, teaching, um, leadership, uh, intellectual leadership, uh, campus operations and others. And if we speak nowadays that uh, universities should create this learning environment uh, to foster skills both for the 17 sustainable development goals, but also for the uh, re emerging challenges of the fourth industrial uh, revolution, as I said, through teaching, pedago pedagogical means, um, educating uh, global citizens and others. Um, I believe that uh, one of the main uh, responsibilities of universities nowadays indeed is to create in, in young people critical thinking, but also to embrace change. Um, in, in, in some ways, I would say that uh, when we speak about uh, creating this um, uh, need for sustainable development, embracing this, uh, uh, this kind of becomes the new intellectual challenge, the new intellectual discipline uh, in front uh, of the universities, but equally also the organizing uh, principle uh, for universities uh, in, our, uh, in our time. Now, um, when we speak, uh, many experts today speak about the fusion of technologies that are blurring the lines between the physical, 
the digital, the biological spheres, uh, there is an increasing need for higher education to search for responses for both their positive economic, social, environmental impacts, as well as the challenges they represent for us, for human beings. And this is my second point. Many experts insist also that effective education strategy must include in equal measure, a deep consideration of the human, the ways in which new technologies and shifting economic power impact people of all socioeconomic levels, and the threats that exist within a world that is increasingly interconnected. So I would like to quote here, and I'm sure that um, uh, Federico and Gary would, uh, uh, would support what I'm, I, I would like to quote here, the great French intellectual and thinker of the 20th century, Claude Lévi-Strauss, who was for some time also closely linked with UNESCO and very much influenced also the thinking about race, ethnicity, culture and diversity. He did influence also the thinking behind the linkages between the social and natural sciences, a topic that is very high, I believe, on the agenda of education, of scientists, of thinkers today. He famously said, recommending the unification of methodological thinking between the exact sciences and human sciences, uh, the speculations of the earliest geometers and arithmeticians were concerned with men far more than with the physical world. Pythagoras, for one, was deeply interested in anthropological significance of numbers and figures, as were the sages of China, India, pre-colonial Africa and pre-Columbian America, which were preoccupied with the meaning and specific attributes of numbers. So if the future economy, education, health and jobs uh, is digital, it is important that education prepares young people for such an economy where problem solving, innovation and creativity is valued. And where lifelong learning becomes the norm, not the exception. This is another area where I know that the World University Consortium and the World Academy of art and science is working on how universities can work in, with flexibility and openness, a very, in my view, relevant and interesting debate. It needs, and it will require major changes in content and pedagogical work, certification, delivery systems, but I believe there is the future which lies ahead of us. And if we say, that effective education strategy must include in equal measure a deep consideration of the human, then the issue between culture, arts, and education come forward strong, in my view. And this is my third point. Aesthetic education, embracing art in all its diversity, is an essential component of comprehensive education. On one side, I deeply believe that culture acts as a catalyst for economic and social development and for the first time is recognized in the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development 2030. This is particularly important today when humanity confronts the challenges of rebuilding a post-pandemic world. This cannot be done without culture and both citizens awareness and engagement. Uh, scientific research also shows time and time again that there is clo close link between education and culture. And then aesthetic education has an extremely positive impact on both academic achievement, social and emotional development, civic engagement and equal opportunities further on in life. Research shows also the involvement in arts is associated with gains in mathematics reading, cognitive ability, critical thinking, and verbal skill. Art learning can also improve motivation, concentration, confidence, and teamwork. STEAM education should become the normal approach to teaching students creativity and how to solve complex problems. And I would say one of the last points I would like to say, this brings me, to the important topics of teaching arts and humanities, of which I have been a strong advocate 
when I was at UNESCO. I deeply believe that it is through humanities and arts that we understand the social transformation of our societies and the way to manage it for the benefit of all. It is through humanities and arts that we understand and get to know the history and culture of others. It is through humanities and arts and the culture also that we understand better the challenges of globalization. And it is through humanities and arts that we understand and embrace cultural diversity as a, as a strength and not as a threat. So teaching philosophy or history of arts is fundamental for the opening of young minds towards the diversity and the other. It is the constant challenge of the present that can make one imagining and reinventing the future. I was thinking about that, Don Federico, when you were speaking, that we have to reinvent the future. And I think this is precisely what we have to do now through education. A book can, or a lesson of philosophy, may change the perception of the world, may instill empathy and the sense of belonging. Knowing one's own history, culture and heritage creates a sense of belonging. Knowing others' history, culture and heritage creates a sense of sharing and solidarity. And the role of university in this endeavor is indeed critical as their main function at the end of the day is to make a significant contributions to society because universities are not now nor ever have been solely focused on preparing young people just for the workforce. It is about values and citizenship, about preparing young people to give back to their communities and to live in a globalized world. So I believe that universities and higher education should be no strangers to the new vision that was proposed by UNESCO, created by UNESCO in 2015, incorporated in the goal number four about global citizenship education in the 21st century. Thank you for your attention.